A newspaper daily has announced its decision to refer to Mr. President as Major General Buhari. And it seems like the drama in Azorok between the First Lady Aisha Buhari and Mama Ndora and presidential spokesperson Gada Bashehu sees no end in sight as she has released some damning news on the duo. Well, this is Plus Politics and I am Mary Anna A newspaper daily stated that he would henceforth refer to President Muhammad Buhari as Major General, as he was called in the 1980s, and his administration as a regime until they put a stop to the contempt for the rule of law. This is coming barely two years after the First Lady Aisha Buhari referred to her husband as the Lion King, whose reign was threatened by the cabals. And while all this is going on, Catholic archbishops in the north have identified injustice committed by political leaders as the major cause of unrest and crisis in Nigeria. And joining us to discuss this in the studio, I have uh, Christian Wogu, he's a legal practitioner, and Shagun Shopita, political analyst. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. You both look like lawyers, <laughs> dressed as if you're going to court. Anyway. I'm going to start with the move by a Punch newspaper to refer to Mr. President as a major general because of the contempt of court. Now, Christian, you are a lawyer. Is this within the rights? And I'm not in any way trying to say if this is right or wrong, but I want to understand from a legal perspective if a, a newspaper or a journal, this is a good journalistic standpoint or maybe a protest of sorts by this newspaper? Well, you know, the rank of a major general is a very high rank in the army. Um, after that is the lieutenant general and then the general. So ordinarily, referring to somebody as a major general will have been somewhat of um, a praise. Um, but it's within the context of um, the punch, um, it's like they are using this opportunity, finding a way, you know, to show discontentment. Uh, the reason is very clear. Um, a, quite a number of um, court decisions, rules, had not been obeyed by the um, current regime using <laughs> so okay. um, in that case, it's like they're finding a way to connect the president of 2019 to the head of state of 1983. So I think that's the, uh, what they want to do, um, to tell the president and the entire governing system that, hey, this is actually civil governance. It's not military rule. Um, one can get away with disobeying courts uh, during the military regime. But if you insist on repeating the same thing that a military regime, a military junta would do, mm -hmm. then why don't we just settle down for what we now see you as? Um, a major general and then in a regime, we'll call it now democratic regime. So it's not really like is there, a is there, is there such a thing as a democratic regime? Well, I mean, you know, that's, you know, it's like saying oil and water, they don't mix. So how do you say a democratic regime? Yes, yeah, it's, mean, it's, it's as is that a satire of yeah, sorts? It's or? as geomatic, but again, the, that's the point. It's like asking, should somebody disobey the court? in a democratic regime. So if it's happening, then why don't we just also back it up mm -hmm. with what uh, the right um, identification. He's just trying to find an identification situation. Essentially, the, the newspaper is trying to find a way to say, hey, Mr. President, um, this is not the way it should be done. Mm -hmm. It could have been done several years ago, and uh, but no, not anymore. But if we or you insist on doing it this way, then, in our own understanding, let's just call you the name you are, Major General. And I'm sure, like, um, 
his press team had said there's something wrong in his answer major general. Interesting. That brings me but to my it's next... really out of context. It <laughs> brings me to my next question. Shagun. Um, uh, Femi Adishina is saying, look, well, they don't see anything wrong with this. This is something he earned, you know, in his lifetime. So if the Punch newspaper decides to call him that, then that's not a problem. But how does this move by the Punch newspaper, which I feel, I'm not sure, is a stand by journalists also who feel oppressed, who feel that they're being gagged, who feel that every word now has to be clearly thought out before you even put it out. How do you think that this is going to help change the course of things if the presidency is already, you know, <laughs> shushing it? Um, you know the style, the typical style of the Buhari administration that we've gotten used to is... Have we? Yeah, I mean, we have to. We don't have a choice. It's been five years and it hasn't changed. Oh, we don't? No, I don't think we do. Really? Because they, they won't change. In a democracy, people they don't have change. a choice? No, no, no. Let me, let me, let I'm me finish. I'm shocked. I let thought that in a democracy, let, you let have finish. a choice. Let me finish. You don't have a choice to, but to adjust to their style. The style that I'm talking about is one where... I'm sorry, Shegu. That sounds me, like an imposition. Finish. No, no, no. Let me, you don't know You're what I'm about to say. <laughs> you don't know what I'm about to say. But so the startup is land. wrong. Well, let me just land. They, they've got a style that is disdainful of our opinion, right? Anything that you say to the president or about the president, they simply tell you it doesn't matter. And they've done it time and again. And it will not change because that is the character of the man himself. He is resolute in his ways. He's set in his ways. Remember, he's 76. He has been like this for a long time. He won't change now. Right? So that's what I mean by we don't have a choice but to just get to understand that and then flow in that line with them. So there is a what, I, what I mean by that is, sorry, when you come to lead a country, yeah. you don't come with your own rule book. There what, are what rules do? that you have to what adhere do you do? to. Marianne, you don't foster people Marianne, to begin to follow your way. What do you do? This is how you're sounding. No, no, no. What, like, what do you do when you tell a man that this is how I feel? And he says, so what? Well, there and he are says, so what? Yes, of course. So what I'm saying is that we as a people, first of all, need to understand that the statement, what I'm just trying to say is that the statement from Femi Adesino is in character. That's what I'm saying. That what he has said, I would have been shocked if he had said anything differently, especially him, Femi Adesino. Now, bear in mind that Garabashehu has taken the exact opposite route. In acknowledging that, yes, my colleague has said, you know, anybody can call him anything they want and they are well within their rights. However, he then went and on a tirade against the newspaper saying, you are hypocrites because you also were in this country when so-and-so ruled, when so-and-so ruled. In fact, they made, he gave the example of Ibrahim Babangida, who was a military dictator calling himself president and said, but the punch did not at that time insist on calling him general. They called him president, right? So there's been two reactions from the presidency to this thing. The, the question is that, does this do any harm one way or the other? So to Femi Adishino, I will say, well, it does matter. You know, you can't just say, yeah, we're within our rights to call him whatever we want to call him because the president himself actually told the whole world and the, whole, the, 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 the Nigerian population, that he would now like to be referred to as President Buhari rather than General because he is a reformed Democrat. These were his own words just less than four years ago. So if, the, and, and I know that it is within this context that that newspaper decided to say, no, well, you've told us that you're a reformed Democrat, we should call you President. From the actions that you have taken so far, or that your proxies and your appointees are taking so far, you are obviously not a Democrat. Therefore, we will not call you president. We will say you are general, retired. So it's a symbolism, and I think that symbolism is important. I think we should um, um, acknowledge and give kudos to that publication for taking that very bold and unusual stance. I, I, and I'm coming back to you now, Christian, because a lot of people were scared literally, when they saw the stands by the punch. In fact, they thought that the DSS would be at their office the next day. But as we talk about the fact that there's, you know, the total disregard for the rule of law, there's 
total disregard for the people. Where does this leave us? Because again, it's like throwing rotten tomatoes into a hole. There's no, it doesn't make any difference. It's like pouring water on the back of a chicken. That's what the reaction that we're getting now. But where does this leave us? We voted for a democracy. And what we're seeing is a total opposite. And has, as he has painted a picture saying, it looks like this is not going to change. We might have to accept it. Do we really want to accept this? Is this the Nigeria that we want? Yeah, there's quite a couple of issues you've raised. Well, we wouldn't rule out the fact that DSS, in fact, they hadn't visited, that they didn't visit. <laughs> well, we don't know, do uh, we? So, <laughs> they, well, let's, uh, so we just don't have to take that for granted. Now, as a matter of fact, we must also commend, I must join um, voice to that of my colleague to commend the punch for coming out this boldly to say, look, you're a despot. That's what they're saying, in other words. And we must give you the name that is consistent with being a despot. Now, whether we will have to accept that, absolutely not. Absolutely, absolutely not. Um, it must be underscored that power belongs to the people. It may be playing low. On paper? Uh, well, not on paper, in reality, <laughs> because, I mean, you could see quite some radical changes during the last election. It may have been few and far between, but they happened. So I believe that um, as these leaders keep daring the people, and the people are getting bolder, and the newspapers are, are doing exactly what they should be doing, because it's a kind of um, uh, a call for everybody to wake up. And as they keep doing this, you'll find that somehow the people are going to say no. Uh, it will start from somewhere. It, will not, it may not be revolutionary. But it still will be through the constitutional means provided, because there is a whole lot of constitutional means. I know that right now, um, one party may think that it has a whole lot of um, the legislators uh, in its pocket, but it doesn't necessarily follow when the pressure starts mounting. I think that's a whole call for this regime to actually sit... <laughs> I like that you put emphasis yes, on the regime yes, sit in a on, democracy. Yes, and begin to uh, measure itself against the feedback they are getting from the people. It must not be relegated. It must not be pushed away. Because eventually, this is democracy. It's, it, it, they came through the will of the people. Um, and whether by paper or by whatever means, but it's still by the will of the people. And eventually, they will have to account to the people, ultimately. Let's talk about, you said, you, you mentioned the constitution, that we have to go through it. But this constitution, I like to raise this issue all the time. It's, not a, it's a, an inherited one. We inherited it from a military dispensation. How do we expect that these laws will help us in a democracy, which one way or the other is to total different thing from what we experienced as people who were under military, a military government? When are we going to come to realization that we need to revisit the 1999 constitution as amended? We, 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 I, there's been a couple of amendments in the last, um, over the last 10 years or thereabouts, and I'm aware that a number, is still, a number of amendments are still being proposed. Just today, um, the news came out that the House of Reps was proposing a separation of the Office of the Attorney General and the Minister of Justice, so that's a constitutional amendment. Um, you know, the, the, the issue you raise is, is a philosophical one. Do we... Do you want to go for a piecemeal improvement or, as some people will say, or, as some others will say, do we just say, no, this is rubbish, this document is a fraud and we need to tear it up and start afresh? It's a philosophical thing and, you know, how it will play out depends on us, the people, I, I dare say. Um, now, how? As a people, we've got to get to the point where we realize that we do have a say in how things turn out. So, you know, which is why I was trying to say, let me learn. Because when I was saying we don't have a choice, I, I wasn't saying we have to accept whatever they throw at us. I was saying this is their style. They won't change it, you know, but we can decide that, no, this is what you are trying to do. We will resist. So as an example, the Coalition of Civil Society Organizations has given the government a 14-day ultimatum over the Shawara issue. And no, but you know, you know, this is how do, it starts. Do you see the look of my face? Yes, I see it. And I tell you that... Do you know why I'm doing this? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it looks like skepticism it's, to me. Like, exactly. Well, you know, um, because, and what I'm, will come of this? I'm, 
I'm you very I'm, I'm very optimistic. <laughs> I mm -hmm. like to be an optimistic person, mm -hmm. but in Nigeria, yeah. civil society has somewhat, and with due respect to you, who's my friend, and all the people who I know in civil society, mm -hmm. it's half past dead. Yeah. Why would the government take you seriously? I mean, it depends on how resolute you prove yourself to be. Have you done that in the past few years? I think that some changes have happened because there has been some advocacy and pressure. What has not happened in recent times is protests, is resolute, determined, unrelenting and unyielding protests that will continue until the outcome is um, achieved the way it's going on in Hong Kong, that the protest is running into months. That's what we don't have here, and for obvious reasons. You know, how long can you sustain a protest when people are hungry? When they can't, you know, if they don't work for two days, they will, they will not eat. You know, so that, that's a challenge in itself, but that's not to say we have to give up, throw up our hands in the air and say, oh, no, there's nothing we can do. So we give them our ultimatums, we tell them this is what we want, and we insist on it. And if they don't do it, there are recourses that we still have. We can go to court. You know, I mean, just as an example, absolutely. So Here Sarah, for again. instance, yes. So for instance, um, a civil society organization, just like all the others, went to court to challenge the legality and the constitutionality of the pension um, laws enacted by state governments across the country, and they won. You know, whether the enforceability I'm or sorry, otherwise... I'm sorry, Lagos State Government just yes. came up to say that, you know, what that, all that thing that happened yeah. was powder dash because they're going to stick to what their laws no, are. No problem. It's, so. it's their right to say that. But ultimately, when a judgment has been given, the court is waiting for proof of, um, of enforcement. There's something that the lawyers will say, you know, you have to present it that to the court to say, well, it's been enforced. And if it doesn't happen, then we go to the next stage. But the point I'm making is that that's an effort by civil society organization who is just not sitting and folding their arms. We can't fold our arms. We need to say no to some of these tendencies, you know, okay. um, that we're getting from our government. I love the optimism coming from him. I, seriously, I do. And I'm not making light of it. But again, back to you, Christian. The civil societies are a handful, unfortunately. They're a handful. The majority of us who are young people are struggling to make ends meet because mm -hmm. a 40 year old man in Nigeria is still a youth. <laughs> <laughs> a 50 year old man is still a youth. And just yesterday, a 24 year old just became prime minister in Finland. In Nigeria, they'll tell you that experience is what you need to become a leader. So there are too many things that are in the way for us. Do you see the average person joining forces with civil society? Are we in any way going to be tired soon enough to join this fight or we're just going to rest on our oars and look for what to eat as usual? Okay, no, um, somebody said, not that I really support that, that Nigerians um, haven't been pushed to the wall enough. Um, that when they are, they will, um, but I think that Nigerians have really gone through a whole lot. It's just that uh, for some reason, either culture or religion or mm -hmm. whatever has come to make us accept you know, things that we shouldn't ordinarily accept. I'm wondering, um, what's, what's it called? Hong Kong. I'm sure they, half of them are Buddhist. I don't see that getting in the way. They're very, very spiritual people in, in Southeast Asia. I don't see that stopping them from being what they want to be. Yeah, Why yeah. does ours no, always see, have to really, get in the way? Not, well, that hasn't been known to be the culture of Hong Kong. It's just that it's gotten to a, a place and a time when everybody... Culture has never just, gotten in the way of them doing anything. Everybody just could say, no, not anymore. Um, Nigerians have really been, I don't know why the government have, are putting Nigerians through too much stress. And, um, and we're so taking it. So co and we're taking it. So cohesion is something. Cohesion is something. And somehow I've come to put some responsibility on the doorstep of the media because they have to start some kind of consistent mobilization. Well, um, we're here every day. <laughs> yes, Every other day, and you're here with us, so what else do you want us to do? <laughs> well, we have to take a short break. This is a very interesting conversation, it's still plus politics. Uh, Christian Mogu, legal practitioner, Shegu Shopita is a political analyst. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we're still talking about the presidency, this time from the First Lady's perspective. Stay with us.